not going as planned. Ugh. So good. No, really, it's fine. I'm totally mentally stable. It's, it's pretty good. I can't lie. Ugh, it's so hot. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for clicking on this video. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel because it's just something new every week. You know, they say find a niche on YouTube, find like a theme of videos. It's different all the time. Could be about my cat. Maybe it's cooking video, cleaning, workout. Who knows? I like to keep it spicy. Oh wow, I hated that. As you read from the title, this is a part two to my taste testing and trying healthy TikTok snack video. I have five different recipes to share with you guys that I found from TikTok. I'm so excited about them. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm starting with a recipe that I think is gonna take the longest to bake, and that is a spaghetti squash pizza. Yes, you heard correctly. So we all know that cauliflower has become a pizza crust, chickpea has become a pizza crust. Basically, any vegetable at this point can just turn in to a pizza crust. At least that's what they want you to think. When I saw this recipe, I was actually kind of excited because I actually do like spaghetti squash. Okay, so now you just want to, I guess, scrape the inside out. Am I supposed to cook this first? I don't think the TikTok recipe says that she cooked the spaghetti squash first, but you would think, right? Otherwise, it's just like raw? Hmm. Ugh, you have to cook it first. Why, why did I think I could just scoop out a raw spaghetti squash and like start making something out of it? This is not a great start to this video. This is the first recipe. The spaghetti squash pizza is temporarily on hold while the spaghetti squash cooks. Because apparently I thought I could use raw spaghetti squash. Moving on to the second recipe. I think it's gonna take the longest to go to bake in the oven. And are these cauliflower buffalo bites. Oh my gosh. Why do I make these videos? Knowing damn well I need a certain amount of some ingredient. This time it's almond flour I'm working with. Anyways, <laughs> let's get to um, chopping up this cauliflower bad boy here. So I guess this is technically a vegan recipe because this is not chicken. These are not chicken buffalo bites or whatever. Um, cauliflower, again, if we've learned anything in life, it's that cauliflower can be anything, which means you can be anything. If a cauliflower can turn into a pizza crust, or, or buffalo bites, then you can do whatever you set your mind to. Don't forget that. Now it's time for me to chop this cauliflower with a knife that's entirely too big, but I'm gonna use it anyways, because all of our other knives are dirty. All right, I decided to cut my cauliflower into like kind of smaller pieces, because I really want them to be um, little bits, you know? I've also decided I'm gonna use my silicone mat instead of parchment paper, because I'm environmentally friendly, but also because I don't have parchment paper, so. <laughs> so prepared. So now it's time to make the batter. And again, we've already established that this might not be enough almond flour, which by the way, yes, I'm using almond flour because we're keeping this um, low carb, gluten free or whatever, even though the regular recipe says to use um, regular flour, but I don't have that, so. Oh, this one's good enough, actually. This is a note to Eddie and Kayla. Go to the grocery store, you're out of almond flour, you dumb bitch. We're gonna add in some seasonings. You know, I'm not gonna measure. I don't really ever measure seasonings. I don't know about you guys. The recipe will be like, you need one eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm like, come on, an eighth of a teaspoon? Get out of my face. Now, if you wanna make this vegan, you can use unsweetened, like plain almond milk. I only have unsweetened vanilla and I don't want these to taste vanilla-y, so I'm just gonna have a little half and half. Don't come for me. I'm sure I'm worried about that much. Didn't measure, it's fine. Maybe one day I'll make like a cooking video where I just make something, like cookies or, I don't know, brownies, and I just don't measure. I just like wing the whole thing, just see how they turn out, because that's kind of what I do in life and I'm doing pretty good so far, so. So now I'm just mixing together this little batter. Okay, here is the dipped cauliflower. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the oven. It's on 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna go about 20 minutes, check on the spaghetti squash, and then get making um, the next thing because these have to come out of the oven then be dipped in buffalo sauce and back in the oven. So moving on to the next TikTok snack. All right, so the next recipe I am so excited about, it is a banana blueberry ice cream or like an ice cream or whatever, except I uh, <laughs> messed up again. I thought, I thought I had frozen blueberries. 
I do not. I have frozen mixed berries. Do we think that's gonna be the same or should I pick out the blueberries? What do you guys think? You can't answer me, but what do you think? Should I pick out the frozen blueberries out of this and be like totally psycho? Yes, the answer is yes. You know what? I have messed up, so now we have to overcome and adapt. And there's blueberries in here, so we can make this work. You know, people always ask me, Kayla, what do you do on your days off of work? This. So one of the other times that this food processor has famously been on this channel, my cert food diet video where I followed like Adele's diet or whatever, that video has over a million views. What the actual heck? What the heck? Anyways, let's add in the ingredients. We have one cup of frozen blueberries. They're not very frozen. Oh man. We're gonna use them anyways. It looks like a slug. Anyways. We're then gonna add in a quarter cup of almond milk and then a tablespoon of almond butter. I'm gonna use peanut butter because I like peanut butter better. Honestly, between this and the jump roping in my apartment, I don't know how I haven't gotten a single noise complaint yet. <laughs> it's a mystery. So my plan to strain the excess like liquid from the spaghetti squash is just put it in a strainer in a bowl because I don't have a cheesecloth or anything. I probably should invest in one. So I got all the extra liquid out of this spaghetti squash and it does, I mean, have a weird look to it. Like I press it so much that it doesn't really look like the stringy spaghetti that it is. So I'm gonna throw in one egg and then a quarter cup of Parmesan. Here is the spaghetti squash pizza crust before it goes in the oven. It looks not that bad, but here's my problem is when I was squishing it down, there was so much more liquid coming out of it. And before I actually put it here and I showed you on camera, look how liquidy it is. I strained it again and then put it on here and squished it and it was still super liquidy. So I'm really worried that that's gonna have something to do with the quality of this thing. Like I feel like it's just gonna be a mushy mess. Moving on to the next recipe are these peanut butter chocolate dipped dates. The last time I had a date was my cert food diet video. And last time I had a real date before that, <laughs> oh, it's been so long. How many times do you guys think I can make the date joke till it gets old? Ask them for a friend. The directions for this recipe are pretty self-explanatory. You take the pit out of the date, we're gonna put a little peanut butter on the inside, and then dip them in a little chocolate, and they're gonna be delish. I went ahead and pulled the cauliflower bites out of the oven. They look pretty done. And so does the crust for the spaghetti squash pizza. It looks like it's getting nice and crispy. We'll see though. Um, but now it's time to put some toppings on the pizza. I don't wanna to add too much sauce to this because I don't want it to get more liquidy than it already is. All right, this is going back in the oven for a little bit and hopefully the end result will be a delicious low carb spaghetti squash pizza. The last TikTok snack I'm gonna be making, zucchini fries. Was that lame? Probably. This is definitely one thing I have not made ever before. So I'm just gonna slice these pretty thin and then I'll get started making the batter. I got this nutritional yeast at Trader Joe's. I've actually never cooked with it or anything like that before. So I'm interested to see how this is gonna taste. All I know is I heard it's like a cheesy alternative, especially if you're doing vegan foods. It has a little bit of like a cheesy flavor. I also chopped up the zucchini in like different size and shapes to see if like one cooks better, if it makes it crispier, if it's a certain way or anything. So a little bit of an experiment. Here are the peanut butter dates. They've been chilling in the fridge for a little while. And then here's the melted chocolate. It's time to dip. Honestly, this takes me back to when I was a waitress. Being able to carry all these plates. Look at this, look at it. The talent, the talent. Here's the final product of the cauliflower buffalo bites. They smell really good, but let's see how they taste. Cheers. All right, these are way better than I expected. Since these had to be baked twice in the oven, I think that's what causes the cauliflower to get really, really soft. Seriously, way better than I was expecting. I'd have to give these four out of five stars. Next up is the zucchini fries, and they look really good. I don't 
know, they look promising. I have a feeling though they're not gonna be as crispy as I want them to be. I also made a little sriracha mayo dip to go with it, so let's go for a taste test. They're definitely not as crispy as I'd hope they'd be. Maybe they'd be better in the air fryer. They're not bad, but they're not great. I really wish they would have crisped up, but with a vegetable like a zucchini that has so much water in it, I don't really know what I was expecting. Maybe it's just the nutritional yeast I don't like, like the flavor of it. The zucchini fries get a two out of five stars for me. Next up, the peanut butter chocolate coated dates. These look heavenly. Let's see how they taste. These have to be five out of five stars. Like, can you actually go wrong with anything dipped in chocolate and peanut butter? I think the answer is no. So the one I'm looking the most forward to trying is a spaghetti squash pizza. I mean, it doesn't look that bad. So when you, when you rip it, you can see all the shreds of the spaghetti squash. Interesting. All right, here is to the spaghetti squash pizza. I'm not mad at it. You know what? I actually like this. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm honestly surprised. I think my standard was really, really low and this actually, my expectation of it was better than I predicted. But there was a lot of work that went into something that tastes average. I'm probably gonna give this three out of five stars. It's almost out of four, maybe like three and a half out of five. Last but not least is the banana and blueberry ice cream. It still has that like smoothie bowl consistency. Definitely not like ice cream consistency, but it looks a lot better. It tastes like exactly what you think it would taste like. It's really good, but honestly, I taste way more of the banana than the blueberry. I think I'm gonna give this a four out of five stars. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up for me. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.